So first of all, good morning, Boker Tov. Um, I wanted to start the, uh, the event today with the elephant in the room and kind of uh, put it out there because I've been hearing a lot of people talking about is OpenStack dead or not? Are we still alive or not? And hopefully by the end of this presentation and definitely by the end of this day, you'll get a good answer for that. So I'm not going to answer that right now. Let's see where we are. So I took actually a, a post that uh, got viral uh, over the past few days uh, just around the, the OpenStack event in Boston uh, by uh, an interesting name of the guy, a uh, guy named Major, <laughs> Major Hayden. Uh, was happened to be a... Uh, Operator. And his view, I think, was, uh, was I think, very uh, uh, pragmatic into that sense that basically talks about the fact that uh, the fact that the technology is maturing, part of the maturity is that it becomes a little bit boring because it actually does the stuff and it becomes less cool than the rest of the stuff. So that's one perspective on, uh, on where OpenStack is. And as I was kind of thinking about it myself, I looked in retrospect of where we are today compared to where we started when we talked about infrastructure. And really, that, that bears the question, is that really that boring? What we're doing? Our day to day? And I didn't feel that I'm doing boring stuff. I actually felt very exciting about the stuff that we're doing for a long time. And if you really look at in retrospect, where we started with infrastructure and where we are today, we're talking about NFV. We're talking about containers, we're talking about serverless, we're talking about things that are changing the world in many ways. Are those things boring? Anyone is bored in dealing with serverless, containers, NFV, and all those type of things? I don't think so. And with got to OpenStack, I think that's also kind of a misconception. Some people would look at slide before as alternative to OpenStack, where the right way to think about it is OpenStack provides a platform to run all of those uh, uh, new technologies and new innovation. And that's the right way to look at OpenStack. And many of those technologies, and you'll hear about it in the talks today, are actually integrated with OpenStack. Containers, Kubernetes, actually you could actually even run OpenStack with Kubernetes. And you can run containers within Kubernetes, and there are many actually talks and, and, uh, that will cover that, that part today. We're talking about edge computing, that's also something that is uh, based on OpenStack. And there is a lot of edge computing uh, innovation happening around that. Um, but beyond the technology itself, and, and uh, what you could see in OpenStack is that it really provides that common platform that allows to put all this innovation in one common platform. We've got multiple VM, but also multiple containers. It's not just Kubernetes. You could also run Docker Swarm. You could also run Mesos on OpenStack. You could also run bare metal. Uh, all those flavors are available. And beyond that, it's a collaboration platform meaning that the, the definition of OpenStack and what OpenStack does is pretty much dependent on you. And if you decide that it needs to go to a certain direction, that's what will happen. And that's a big difference. So it's really in the eye of the beholder uh, what the state of OpenStack. And if you believe in community and if you believe in open source, then you believe that OpenStack have a longevity that is much bigger than even a specific technology and all the technology that I mentioned. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, beyond all that thing, I think uh, in the past few years, there was a lot of criticism how hard it is to run OpenStack, that it's very complex. And I think what you'll see, and, and uh, that, that would be probably a shared comment, is that it's not that complex. I was actually hearing from the IDF guys that they're actually running uh, OpenStack directly from the source uh, on their environment today, uh, which was not something easy before. And again, if you look at some of the demos that was running on the summit itself and how you could run OpenStack and even do collaboration and interoperability, that's, that have changed quite a bit. So that perception is a perception of the past and not something that I think applies today in the way it was uh, in years. Now, to be honest, we need to think beyond what we, think, what we thought about OpenStack when OpenStack started, which was pretty much around Nova and, if you like, the traditional IaaS kind of thinking. What does that really mean? It means that OpenStack needs to grow beyond being a cloud of its own to a platform that connects with multiple clouds. And uh, there is already interesting initiative around that. And uh, having OpenStack in itself a cloud-native platform, that's also becoming something 
that needs to happen uh, even faster. Obviously, bare metal cloud, not just limiting OpenStack to KVM kind of OpenStack and think about OpenStack as a platform that could run bare metal. Uh, there is nothing that would prevent it, and actually there is a project ironic that does that, and that's another thing, another way to change the perception between what we used to think about OpenStack and where OpenStack is going. And if you think about OpenStack as a common API, it doesn't have to be a specific implementation of OpenStack as we currently use OpenStack. It could be an API that can run on other clouds. I think Vio in VMR case is a good example for that. But I could see OpenStack becoming also an API front-end for other potentially public clouds, including Amazon and Azure and others. Uh, there is technically those things can be done. And if we do that, we can think about OpenStack not as an alternative to public cloud only, but also as something that can actually integrate nicely and put a nice flavor uh, around all those different APIs. So all this is kind of uh, some evident, some way to think beyond the box and think about OpenStack. But now I want to talk Tachlis. And for those who are not familiar with the word, uh, Tachlis means Dugri. <laughs> So for those who are not familiar with Dugri, <laughs> Dachles really means let's talk business. Okay. So another way to, uh, to talk about OpenStack is really to see who is using OpenStack in Israel specifically, not OpenStack in the world, which we always hear. But here, what is happening here in our local swamp, if you'd like. And last year when I was talking about it, we had ourselves, live person, and few others, but there was even the IDF itself was starting its first step towards that, and they were still debating, considering, and, uh, and thinking about it. And I was, as I was working on the presentation, I was pleasantly surprised to see how many things have changed since last year OpenStack to this year. And I think that's the best answer to that question that I laid out earlier. So first, we can see Bezak, who is one of the biggest uh, uh, carrier provider here in Israel, serving OpenStack today. Uh, you could see the announcement right after OpenStack Israel uh, last year. And now they're already, we're a customer of Bezek actually, uh, running OpenStack, Rackspace OpenStack in our environment. Uh, but there is others that are using it already. But the fact that there is a, uh, a local provider that are providing OpenStack, that is a big, in my view, step towards uh, adoption of OpenStack more widely by organization that needs that hagging to actually be able to operate it. So that's a big thing in my view for the local industry. Okay, so here I can't really say too much. Uh, you'll hear some of the organizational change that uh, the IDF have gone through. Uh, two of the units in, in IDF, one of them is called Mamran, the other one is A200 that some of you know. Uh, but I was told that uh, the only thing, if, if I say anything about what they're doing, then you'll have to kill me. So uh, that's as far as I'll go. Um, speaking of what we're doing with OpenStack, actually the last OpenStack has been our most successful in Cloudify, and I'm coming uh, from a Cloudify side, uh, both from an adoption and, and, and the Op OpenStack Summit had a very cool event that was called the, the Open Source Days, uh, where they actually had uh, hosted events for specific technologies, Cloudify, Ansible, and others. And we're really, really surprised to see how many people actually attended those sessions with shutter short notice. Uh, that was quite uh, interesting. So talking about collaboration, you could see the change also in the way the event itself is being organized uh, as a way that is accommodating other open source initiatives, up other open source technologies, and giving them the room to collaborate and the room to even uh, in uh, uh, interact with other people. And we've seen also substantial growth in customers, which is also another way to look at does it actually, is it going to be a dead technology or not? So obviously if there are customers around it, if there are business around that, if people are willing to pay for that technology and technologies that are from the ecosystem of that, that's also an indication of where that technology is. We also launched a new project that is called ARIA, again, part of that uh, community event. Amdox, people here from Amdox, raise their hand. They didn't wake up yet. Okay, so Amdox is actually uh, pretty big on OpenStack, uh, and I'll speak on their behalf. Uh, but you'll hear their talk on one of the keynotes today. Uh, so Amdox has been uh, using OpenStack in two areas. One of them is ONAP that uh, I mentioned uh, also on our side, uh, which is the big networking uh, consortium, uh, and also in their own data center. Uh, 
It's called the OCS and BSS, and they're running it to actually run their operational data center. And you'll hear more about it. Uh, but again, this is, if you'd like, more classic, traditional type of uh, big vendor that is now adopting OpenStack aggressively in their environment itself. That's also a way to measure the adoption of the technology in the industry. Mellanox, I mentioned Mellanox last year, and I think Mellanox is, uh, you'll see their booth, and they have uh, also covering some other stuff here. But they continue to strive in OpenStack with two initiatives, and they kind of, the, the way I would quote Florian for that, uh, everything uh, high performance on OpenStack. So they're doing a lot of cool stuff on making OpenStack work faster, and they're also providing their own cloud, OpenStack cloud for lab testing and some other capabilities. Newcomer into OpenStack, uh, wasn't the year last year, it's called Kenshu, it's doing a marketing um, kind of operation. And uh, what they basically did is uh, they had their own, if you'd like, uh, uh, consideration to go to public cloud. But as you could see on the size of their operation, the amount of data that they run, the amount of databases that they run, and the amount of workload that they run, uh, got them to the point where running all this workload in a public cloud becomes a fairly costly operation. So they realize that if you can actually optimize the workload to their specific needs, not in a generic need that fits the public cloud, but to their specific needs, they could cut a lot of that cost quite substantially and build an infrastructure that's suitable for their uh, uh, specific performance. And in that case, have a much more uh, performant environment. So that's another way to look into that, and that's another use case that we're seeing and the case is, again, what would be the, uh, the consideration into that. Anyone here from Kenshu, by the way? They still haven't arrived? So yeah, this is too early for Israelis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, live person, anyone here from live person? Kobe, yeah, our fearless leader. Um, so actually, Kobe sent me a correction from last year. I think uh, the number below was uh, 20,000 uh, virtual deaths. So, so uh, live person is actually growing fairly fast in their use of OpenStack. And they're actually running a lot of containers and Kubernetes on OpenStack. So uh, if you think about containers as an alternative to OpenStack, this is an interesting way to look at that as something that can actually run very well with OpenStack and not as an alternative to OpenStack. And the size of, of live person uh, is quite staggering. So that's part of the answer. People are using OpenStack, and the adoption of OpenStack is actually growing, and there is more local companies that are using OpenStack, whether it's Kenshu, whether it's the uh, IDF, whether it's startups like ourselves, and so forth. Uh, but there's also a lot of innovation and investment in R&D centers here in Israel, and this is just a partial list of those innovation centers and R&D centers in Israel itself by international companies, and you can see some of the names here. Uh, and there is more uh, into that. And by all means, if I missed the name here, I apologize. So reach out to me. Now, with that, I kind of conclude. And I wouldn't want to conclude without thanking the people that are actually behind the organization of that. And first of all, it's Jeremy, raise your hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. And obviously, we got Avner. Where are you? Been an uh, organizer for a long time, doing all the work behind the scenes as well. Sharon. <laughs> Florian. <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Gal. Where is Gal? I saw him. Yeah, here is Gal. And Arthur. Arthur is here as well, right? Yeah, here is Arthur. So thank you all very much for setting it up. And uh, last word, what's that? Ah, come on. Um, I wanted to say a last word of thank you for all the sponsors here. Again, all of this wouldn't be possible without you. So thank you very much. And with that, I wanted to reach out to uh, uh, Jonathan and uh, let him uh, continue. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Missed a good football yesterday. Uh, Barcelona actually won Madrid, so... Uh,